You there! Fuck off! Jam motherfucking day! Today. I hope you're doing well. I have on a Playlist Live shirt. I just got back from Playlist Live from the weekend and it was so fun. I got to meet a few people that actually recognized me. Mostly I got to just follow my friend around and go to different events like meetups and panels and you know all sorts of stuff. It was a really good time. I'm probably going to go to the next one that I'm able to go to. I got to meet Bryce. Hey Bryce! And she gave me and Jesse the neatest bracelets. Thank Thank you so much. Also, she gave me this really cool, um, like calligraphy sort of drawing of my initials, and I've got that hanging on my memory board in the other room. I got to meet Angelica. I got to meet quite a few people, and I had a great time. Um, it really was an experience. It was loud. It was, uh, it was mayhem at certain points. I almost got trampled because people were chasing after Tana Monjo, or I think that's how you say her name. <laughs> I just call her Tana. Anyway guys, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. I was reminded of this story somehow on my Facebook. I think it was in my memories like on this day such and such years ago this happened. I'm going to tell you about the time that I catfished a catfish. If you don't know what a catfish is, it's a term for someone who tries to trick you on the internet. Like maybe they try to pretend that they are interested in you romantically and they're just trying to get money. Or maybe it's an ex-boyfriend or an ex girlfriend who's trying to fool you into thinking they are someone else. Catfish is the term that they use. Uh, there was a documentary done about a catfishing situation several years ago. It was called Catfish and there's even a television show called Catfish. It's all about these types of situations that happen every day. But I'm going to tell you about the time that someone tried to catfish me and it did not go well for them. Part of what clued me off was just the language that this person was using. I could tell that English was not their first language and I could tell that they were trying really hard to make me like them romantically somehow. I don't really know. I just picked up on it immediately. So one day I get on Facebook and I have this random message from someone who calls himself Lewis Mark and the message says, hello dear, how are you doing? I was searching for a friend when I came across your lovely profile and I must confess that you captivated my heart with your nice profile and your wonderful looks. Can I know you better? Can we be friends? Do hope to hear from you real soon. Till then, keep smiling, gorgeous, and don't forget that Lewis is here thinking of you and waiting to read from you real soon. Cheers, Lewis. <laughs> so my first response was, who are you? Do I know you? Of course I don't know him. Why am I asking him, do I know you? Like, why did I even respond to this guy? I don't... <laughs> I don't know. This this should also clue you in if this ever happens to you because this person, he responded to me this way. Hello dear, thanks for your warm response. I really do appreciate. I am Anderson Smith by name, am 45 years old and I am from the UK. My mother is from Orleans, France and my late father from Birmingham City, United Kingdom. I do have two lovely daughters I have from my late wife. <laughs> Of course his wife died. I am a contractor. I do travel on job bases. Am a caring, loving, humorous, emotional, and romantic man to a fault. I hate liars and I do not want to have anything to do with anyone who is not honest. I respect people's feelings a lot as such do not want anyone to hurt my feelings too. One of my most treasured asset is my heart and I do not intend on losing it until I find true love and I believe that you fall into the perimeters that I am searching for. Do not see distance as a problem because in the presence of true love, distance can never be a barrier. It can only be used to measure the amount of care, love, affection, and feelings that we both share. It will be very nice if you tell me more about yourself. How old are you? What is your marital status? Do hope to read a message from you real soon. Till then, keep smiling, gorgeous. And don't forget that Lewis is here thinking much of you and waiting to read from you again. Kisses and hugs. <laughs> so many 
pieces to this, okay? His English is terrible. Of course, he's got two children. He lost his wife. He's a contractor. Let me tell you about that. People tend to tell me their problems. And several years ago, a girl that I really don't know that well, she lives here. I'm not really, like, friends with her or anything. But for some reason, she contacted me on Facebook and she said, I really need to talk to you. Maybe you can help me. I have a situation. And I'm like, okay, well, so I call her. And she basically tells me that she met a man on the internet who was a contractor who worked on barges or big big ships in the middle of the ocean and um, you know they got to talking on like Facebook and they became like romantically linked she had never like actually spoken to this person except for on the internet long story short she ended up sending this person her entire tax return <laughs> I'm sorry why 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 would you do that I was just like, I'm so sorry, sweetie, but I do believe you've been scammed. Like, why would... I, I have a lot of friends that I love dearly, and they would not get my entire tax return. Because, like, I need my money. I don't know about anybody else. But I'm not about to give my money to some man who I've only talked to on the internet. So, immediately, I was just like, okay, this is a scam. So, then I'm like, okay, now I'm just going to be a smart ass. And then I wrote... I'm 39. It's ironic that you have a late wife. I am married and my husband is terminally ill. He hasn't been awake or alert for a year now. This is my sixth marriage and I'm hoping to find someone to be lucky number seven. I have children from each marriage, so I am really glad that you like kids. None of my husbands have been able to handle my insatiable sex drive, massive OCD, and my need for total control and dominance. They all said they would be able to deal with it, but in the end, they were not. Do you think you could let me be in charge of the relationship? I've been blessed with great inheritance, so I don't work. Would that be a problem for you? As for my life, my favorite hobby is target shooting. I have a Glock and I'm a dead eye. That means I always hit my target. Do you like shooting? I'm not against long distance relationships at all. I actually like those better because then I don't actually have to talk to you and hear your voice, which I'm sure is going to be super annoying with your British accent. I don't care for that accent. Are you against changing it so that we could actually be together in person for maybe a week per month? That's all I can commit to at this point because I'm waiting for this husband to kick the bucket. Hopefully that is very soon and you and I can go forward with this relationship. A few more questions. Are you claustrophobic? I'm asking because I like to dress my men up in gimp suits. And if you're claustrophobic, it's not going to work out. You can wear leather or rubber. It's up to you, but I need you to wear one. I've said more than I should at this point. With my financial status, I usually have a few things that need to be done before I talk with anyone new in my life. If we continue this relationship, you'll need to sign a non-disclosure statement and have it notarized. Are you against that? Do you think you can make that happen? Keep shining your light on the world. You've made my day, Sugar Biscuit. Can I call you that? <laughs> my real name is Cherry Higginbotham, but you can call me Jen. XOXO, can't wait to hear from you. <laughs> he didn't write me back. So, being the smart ass troll that I am, I continued writing to him. Hello dear, I haven't heard back from you. I hope you're doing well. If you don't mind, could you be a lamb and tell me your measurements? I'm gonna go ahead and order you a gimp suit. I'll get the rubber one first, and if you decide to move up to leather, we'll get that sorted out later. I've been thinking of you, Sugar Biscuit, and I sent a picture of a dude in a gimp suit, just to let him know what to expect. And he wrote back, Thanks for your warm response. Do you have Yahoo ID? Do have a lovely day. Cheers, warm hugs. Like, why would he write back, cheers, warm hugs, thanks for your response to all of what I just sent him and a picture of a dude in a gimp suit? Because he doesn't speak English. That's why. So I wrote back, not to be outdone. I'm sorry, you've promised me a lot, Lewis. You're not getting off this easy. Oh, no, no, no. You and Cherry Higginbotham, we's gonna get married. I wrote back, well, oh my, you're a man of a few words today. I was so hoping that you would let me know if you're willing to move forward in our relationship. I actually do have a Yahoo ID. It's Cherry Higginbotham at Yahoo.com. You know, I made that just for this dude. Do you think you could go ahead and send me your measurements? I'm going to the S&M shop tomorrow after tea with my grandmother and I'd really like to pick up your suit. This particular suit in the picture I sent you is called Mr. Anal Bead. You can Google that and see what size you would need and just let me know if you don't want to go through the process of getting your measurements taken. It's up to you. Have a wonderful day, Sugar Biscuit. Know that I am sleeping with your picture each night. 
I already feel so close to you. I long for your heartwarming messages all the time. XOXO. Okay, he wrote back. Sweetie Chocolate, <laughs> I, I can't stop missing you. Even when I'm basking in the sun, I'm thinking about you. Not a day goes by when you're not in my thoughts, my hopes, and my prayers. Let's get together and have some fun. I can't wait to laugh and smile with you. There's a lot of sunshine ahead for us to take in together, and I'm looking forward to brighter days spent with you. Cheers, honey. Have a wonderful day and warm hugs. Why is he calling me Sweetie Chocolate? That is not my name. My name is Cherry Higginbotham. And he loves me? Like, we just started talking. You're moving kind of quick, Lewis. Then he turned around and sent me, immediately sent me the next message. Hello, sweetie. How are you doing? Hope you fine and healthy for me. <laughs> what is that? What am I, a horse? Well, I really do care about you. We will chat better more tomorrow, okay? I care. Kisses. I write back to him. Sugar biscuit. Are you cheating on me? You sent me two messages in a row and in the first one you called me Sweetie Chocolate. I'm hoping I'm not correct in my assumption. I don't like to share. But if you feel the need for affection when we can't be together, I don't mind if you're with a man. I certainly hope my little soon-to-be gimp would not break my heart after all the time that we've been talking. I told my grandmother about you today and she was very happy for me. I told her that as soon as my husband dies, you and I will be getting together. When you move here to live with me, she can watch all of our kids while you and I go out to the sex parties I'm going to take you to. She's 96 and she loves to babysit. I was wondering if you could take some new pictures of yourself and send them to me, particularly of you basking in the sun. I can just picture my little sugar biscuit getting browner and browner while he's basking. I don't think that you using the phrase basking in the sun is suspiciously homosexual at all. It's a very masculine phrase, right along with how you asked me if I was healthy for you. It didn't sound at all like you were hoping that I don't have any sexually transmitted diseases, which I don't anymore. I can't wait to frolic with you in the fields of daisies and tulips. I can just picture you with white linen pants and a gold nugget pendant on a herringbone chain nestled in your chest hair. Have a good sleep, my love. XOXO. Lewis wrote me back. Hello, honey. How are you doing? Hope you are fine and healthy. Honey, I can't cheat on you. I really do care about you, honey. I want to be with you. Honey, you have to accept me on Yahoo, okay? So we can chat more better. I love you. Warm hugs and kisses. Then he wrote back, like immediately. Hello, sweetie. I am waiting for you on Yahoo. I really want to be with you, honey. Okay, so supposedly this dude is from the UK and he works on an oil rig making like a shitload of money, but he can't speak good English. At this point, I pretty much like was starting to get irritated. I wrote back, why is your English and your grammar so bad? I mean, you pretty much destroy every sentence you try to write me. I thought you were from the UK. Don't you speak the Queen's English over there? And how come you never respond to any of the things I have asked you? What size gimp suit do you need? I can't go get you one if you don't tell me that. You haven't said anything about the non-disclosure agreement either. Do you actually speak English? Are you from a different UK than the one I know about? Kisses and hugs. Cherry. Here's a picture of Lewis. This is the picture he was using. So there's a thing called Google Images. Anyone can do it. All you have to do is get on the computer and go to Google Images and you can put in an image that some like this picture of Lewis you can put that in and then any picture that matches it on the internet is supposed to come up. And so I found this guy, I'm not going to say his real name, but I found the dude that Lewis had stolen these photos from. And I found his actual Facebook page. And I went through his pictures and sure enough, the pictures that Lewis was using on his Facebook page were this dude's pictures. Even the pictures of his kids. So I wrote to that person and I said, hi. Recently, I was contacted on Facebook by a person calling himself Lewis Mark. He appears to be trying to find women who are single and lonely so that he can get money out of them. I did a Google Images search and found that his photos matched your profile picture on Facebook. After further research, I found you on LinkedIn and then I searched and found you on Google and that's how I got your email address. He has taken all of your Facebook pictures and put them on a fake page with a fake name. He told me that his wife died and that he is raising twin daughters on his own. He has the pictures of you with your daughters in the album on Facebook. I'm sorry to just email you out of the blue and drop this on you, but I just would want to know if it were me. So I sent that to that dude and I sent it to him on Facebook also. And on Facebook you can see when someone has read your message and he read it and he never responded to me, which I mean is fine, you know. um. Hopefully he took care of the situation. So then Lewis writes back to me 
Hello, sweetie. How you doing, honey? Hope you fine. I got your mails and I love them, honey. It was wonderful. I really do appreciate. Are you okay now, honey? We meet on Yahoo, okay? Much love. Cheers. So I get on my fake Yahoo ID. And this is when Lewis turned into a real asshole. Lewis, how is everybody around you doing? I said, fine, I'm sure. He says, good, got your message. And I said, good, what can I do for you? He says, where are you now, honey? I said, I'm at home. He says, don't worry, we will get to that, okay? What, we'll get to what? What are you talking about, Lewis? What? At that point, I was just like starting to get irritated because just to think that, okay, so I'm not gonna fall for it and I'm not trying to say I'm better than other people, but I actually, like I said, know someone who ended up sending someone like this her entire tax return. Um, and so I just started getting irritated because I know that like this person is preying on people who hopefully would do that same thing. So I said to him, you're a scam artist and I reported you. And that man, he knows you took his pictures off of his Facebook. And here's where Lewis just, I mean, he snapped. Lewis just has a temper. He says, listen, you there, fuck off. I said, okay, bye, have a nice day. And a little while later, he sends me another message, dear. You scare me, but have it in mind that I care about you. Warm kisses. So he just kept blowing up my Yahoo ID messenger thing, which was fine because it was fake. I made up a fake one just to tell him that I reported him to the person who he had taken the pictures from. But basically he kept blowing up my messenger, my Yahoo ID messenger, and he was just like, oh, it's not what you think. Listen, baby, it's not what you think. And then he would be like, oh, hey, fuck off. And then he'd be like, oh, warm kisses, love ya. After I let him know that I had reported him to the person whose pictures he stole, I blocked him. I would like to think no one would fall for this shit, but people fall for this shit every day. And really those people, they're being victimized. You know, when, when someone scams you like that, I would like to think that no one would fall for it, but people fall for it every day. Just be very careful of speaking to people on the internet that you don't know. Something about me, if you just immediately begin attaching yourself to me and you become very needy and very clingy, I'm going to back away from you. I do not like that. I make a lot of acquaintances online and I like meeting new people, but I do not want like no new friends, no new friend. You know, isn't that a song? I, I'm just so white and old. That's not to say that I don't want to meet people and be friends with them, but you know, let's do it normally and naturally. Let's not just meet one day and then all of a sudden like you all the time in my inbox blowing up my shit and just, I become very annoyed very easily. And one thing you should really watch out with these catfish people is that's what they do. Like one minute they meet you and the next minute they're just like, I love you. And then the next minute they're like, oh man, I, don't, I can't pay my bills and oh, I'm losing my car and uh, uh, I can't pay for my hamster's food you know stuff like that and they're just trying to get you to give them things so be very careful of people like that hopefully you enjoyed the story I had forgotten all about it and I'm so glad I remembered it because hopefully this is funny to you guys um, I don't know it's funny to me years later hey guys please follow me on Twitter Please go to Amazon.com and type in Jennifer Dent and you will see the different books that I have available. The newest one is called The Monitor. It is a fiction novel. Um, I hope you enjoyed my story today. I do videos every Tuesday and Saturday, so please tune in next time. Please give this video a thumbs up and if you have not, please subscribe to my channel. If you have, thank you so much. I have a separate vlog channel that I try to do vlogs every day. I will link that below. I hope everybody has a great day and I will see you next time. Bye! But you know, I guess every kid has their time when they act like a complete jackass. And these are two different times that I acted like a complete jackass.